such a massive reach. I mean, Alex, his page alone, I think, reaches 1.6 billion. The fight is online. The fight is already there. People starting blogs, posting things, is spreading the word, but it's also doing more than that. It really results and translates to real action. Thank you so much for your call. We're going to come back with Joe Biggs, talk about ISIS, apparently going to wipe out millions of people with their stolen nukes and total insanity. We'll be back. Thanks a lot. We'll also take some more of your calls later in the show and premiere what's going to come out tomorrow. Thanks a lot. Welcome back to the fourth hour of the Alex Jones Show Overdrive. I'm Anthony Gucciardi, and we're about to talk about some really interesting news. And we've got Joe Biggs here, who's a staff sergeant. He was in Afghanistan, Iraq. He's got some news to talk about on breaking news on ISIS. And I've got some stacks of news here, too. But I want to hear his personal take on this and what he's really experienced firsthand when he was over there. But here's the headline. ISIS nuclear weapons terrorist group plans to kill hundreds of millions in largest religious cleansing in history, says report. And then previously we have ISIS claims it can smuggle devices through Nigeria, Mexico to the United States. ISIS nuclear weapon Islamic State claims it can buy nukes from Pakistan within a year. And their propaganda magazine might just be completely contrived lies. But Joe Biggs, what do you think? I think it's definitely possible. You know, uh, we definitely created these guys uh, by going in and invading Iraq based off lies. We created a radical Islam to say, I mean, imagine you're at home. You've already got a problem with the Taliban. You know, these other uh, groups out there that are very extreme, which really represent a 1% of Islam. And they can't stand those guys. But then you have Western allies come in and start bombing the hell out of your town. Who are you going to hate more? The fear of the boogeyman or the actual boogeyman who's dropping bombs and taking your family out? And that's how, <clears throat> that's how you create this radical Islam. These guys are sitting around like, man, I hate ISIS. Now all of a sudden they're getting bombed and they're losing their families. They're like, well, you know what? ISIS might not be as bad. Let's go join them. The West is really pissing me off. And that's kind of what's happened. So what I want to talk about is a book that Jurgen Toddenhofer wrote. It's called Inside IS, 10, uh, 10 Days Inside the Islamic state. Now, this is a German reporter who embedded with the Islamic State for 10 days. He's the only Western journalist to uh, live and come out of it alive. Uh, he got back a little bit less than a year ago when he wrote this book. And basically what he said is, is the terrorist plan on killing several hundred million people. The West is drastically underestimating the power of ISIS. And I know anytime we post or say anything about ISIS, don't you mean the CIA? Don't you mean that? And they have to hear that same little story all the time by people. Yeah, we know it. It's just like if I'm a man, I have my wife, we have a kid. I can control what my kid does up until a certain age, but then it's an adult and can go do whatever it wants. All right, we might have started ISIS, but it's now grown into this super powerhouse and it can basically do whatever it wants. It's broken away, but at the same time, even though it's broken away and we know that our, our kid's doing bad, so to say the U.S. government's creation is doing bad, they're still arming these guys. Now, ISIS intends to get its hands on nuclear weapons, uh, Toddenhofer says. The group uh, says that a nuclear tsunami will basically kill off a large population of people in this religious cleansing and uh, they now control a land greater in size than the United Kingdom and are supported by an almost ecstatic enthusiasm, the likes of which you've never seen in a combat zone. I've been in combat zones. I've seen the Afghan army operate. They're weak. They, uh, they're not motivated. They get scared easily. The first time you have signs of someone who's bigger than them, they kind of back away and will give their arms off, like we're seeing with the rebels in Syria and so forth and so on. We're supposedly dropping these weapons, and what do they do? They give them now Nazra, they give them to ISIS, Al-Qaeda, whoever, because these guys are bigger and stronger. So that's something that we have to stop doing. This whole funding these guys, this whole dropping ammo uh, off and weapons to these guys isn't working, obviously. And they raid the going. bases and just take it all. But my question is, so this guy, he's a Western journalist. Mm -hmm. Did he fly over there with the intention of getting... In with ISIS or what? Well, this is the thing. He flew over there and how he, do you, how he do thought you go he was going to get killed. He thought he would get killed, but he was planning on writing this book. He's written many books before about uh, Iraq, the invasion with, you know, going in after Saddam Hussein. And uh, he was given uh, a letter. He said, I received a, secured, a security guarantee from the caliphate. He's like, but obviously there was no way to uh, find out that was a guarantee. Now, after the, the fact that he's back. He says the guarantee turned out to be genuine and the ISIS uh, group stuck with their agreement during our visit to Mazol and Raqqa. He said, that, under that time, I was surveilled by the Secret Service and had to hand over my mobile phone and laptops from time to time so they could look through the pictures he'd taken, the video and all that. And then he said ISIS also went through his uh, pictures and deleted some to protect the relatives of foreign fighters. That's what censorship is. Now, there's a copy in this uh, 
uh, it, it almost sounds like a propaganda piece, though, to go over there. Oh, I, I was accepted. I'm not saying this is untrue. It's just, you know, playing devil's advocate here. Go over there, get taken in by ISIS for 10 days and come back and talk about how they're way more powerful than we thought. They could wipe out hundreds of millions of people. This is what they want to do. You know, it, it, I mean, is he not slanting it towards their much greater than we thought or what? I mean, it's possible. I mean, you got to think any time that anyone's been held by them for some time when they get on video, you hear him saying, oh, the Islamic State's great, mm -hmm. this and that. He could have definitely been, you know, playing to their whole thing because he doesn't want to get killed or they could have threatened his family. Who knows? At the same time, the Georgia Guidestones say that they want to take out a large population of the people. Maybe at the end of the day, this is their end game. They want to use this creation ISIS to wipe out a large population of people so they can do whatever it is they want to do. Right. And as Alex said, of course, ISIS could just be a way of just blaming things on the ISIS group. You know, something bad happens. Oh, it was ISIS. You know, a nuclear weapon goes off. It was ISIS. Anything. Well, when ISIS. you have something bad going on in the way that, you know, if something's not working out the way you want it, you create another problem to take away from the other. And everyone problem. hates ISIS. There's there's no one that's going to say, well, ISIS isn't that bad. You know, ISIS is literally the devil in terms of the political spectrum. You know, ISIS is just the worst, most concentrated evil that could possibly exist. And it's tainting everything like you were talking about earlier. Less than one percent of the Muslim community is actually radical, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, sorry, go on with all this. Yeah, I mean, so I've been over there before, and like I said, I've seen how these these people act. You know, a lot of people think that, you know, ISIS, these are a bunch of guys who are cave dwellers, they're they're idiots, they don't know what they're doing. No, they're usually pretty intelligent people. You know, the times that I was uh, in the Kaos province in Afghanistan, I was between uh, Fob Salerno, which is a Ford observation base, and Terzai DC, and that's on the western part of Afghanistan on the Pakistan border. We were doing a convoy from Salerno back to the D.C. where I live, and we caught uh, three guys trying to emplace an IED, which is an improvised explosive device, like a car, uh, a bomb they put in a road, a roadside bomb. And the guys that we stopped, we found, these guys were professors, they had degrees, they were scientists, you know, chemists, all this stuff. These weren't just random they're trying to take our jobs, you know, like, yeah. you know, farmers out there. So they you have think sheep. maybe the, the slant is that ISIS is, is, is these crazy losers that don't know what they're talking about. In reality, they might be a lot stronger than we think. I think it is possible. I mean, because I've seen how it happens over there. When you go in and you start bombing a group of people, just imagine if people here started bombing us. People that we never even thought about. All of a sudden, your hate for the, the U.S. government or distrust in the U.S. government is going to start to go away. And you're going to start not being mad at them anymore. You're going to be mad at the bombs coming overhead that just took out your family. And that's what's happening. We've taken this distraction away and we've created another. So there's a whole lot of craziness going on out there. But, I mean, this guy wrote a really interesting piece talking about, uh, like you said, that uh, you know he's, he was able to spend two days in this ISIS reception camp close to the Turkish border. He said in those two days, each day there was about 50-plus people who came through. And these people came from the U.S., England, Sweden, Russia, France, and Germany. So, yeah, you're going to get a lot of young kids that come out there that see this. It's this new trendy, cool thing to be part of the caliphate, apparently. And those are the ones that get killed off easy because most of those guys are, are probably idiots. But you're going to have a lot of people who have lived in those areas who are, you know, hardcore against ISIS, hardcore against uh, the Taliban, insurgents, all that. And then all of a sudden they started getting bombed and they're sitting there going, you know what? Screw this. I'm going to join these guys because at least I have a fighting chance. We already know the U.S. is giving them weapons. I'm going to have better weapons than the, the forces here in Iraq or the forces in Syria to fight against them. These guys are outnumbered. I mean, we've got, they've got more people. They're seizing oil fields. They're taking over airstrips. It, it, it seems like a, an attractive scenario. So what's your take on ISIS claiming it can smuggle devices through Nigeria and Mexico and nuclear weapons and saying that it could you know, eventually bring them to the United States and start blasting them off? I mean, that's extremely possible. I mean, there's so many canals and tunnels from the Mexico to U.S. side. That's what the cartels use to smuggle this stuff. And anyone who thinks that a group like ISIS doesn't have the money to pay off a cartel just to let them look the other way or to help them get them through a tunnel, they're out of their mind. I've walked across the border dressed as an ISIS jihadi. I've walked across dressed in civilian attire. It's wide open. Now, given there are a lot of places where there's fences, but that guess video what? is insane of you dressing up like Osama bin Laden, wasn't it? No, no, Osama bin Laden was James O'Keefe. I dressed oh, up like okay. the ISIS jihad with you the flag, up like ISIS, and, and chopped you, you off the head. You had yeah. like a fake beheading, and yeah. you walked across the Mexico border, which is screaming and everything, and no one said anything, huh? Yeah. No one even cared. Nope, no helicopters coming in, no border patrol, no ICE agents, anything like that. Just walked across, 
freely, didn't get bothered, actually sat out there for a long time and filmed some other videos where I burned an ISIS flag. And, you know, so. And then you saw a bunch of presumably illegal smuggling drugs in, in, in a van, right? And that was Laredo, Texas. Yeah. So I went down there the day before Trump was supposed to speak. And uh, I went out to do a stand up to talk about Trump coming in and his uh, immigration policy, so to say, and how he wants to build this wall. And over my shoulder, there's seven guys coming across the uh, Rio Grande with these huge satchels and this red Suburban pulls up, trunk opens up and these guys load in the drugs, jump back across. At that time, the border patrol had just driven away. By the way, I said illegals. That, according to South Park's PC principle, I don't know if you've seen that. Oh, yes. The great <laughs> episode where it breaks down political correctness. You PC, dude? <laughs> I actually should not have said illegals. I should have said undocumented citizens is what I should have said. And I, I apologize for that. I was not politically correct in that statement. And you can't say businessman or businesswoman no, no. because or, or that spokes, singles out. Spokesman. So you have to say spokesperson or yes. business person yes. because we live in a PC world now. Just like the kid who had the Confederate flag on his backpack and was kicked out because hey, it's offensive. Hey, let's, and, let's lock the school down. And I, so I guess you've seen that episode and I've seen the Trump episode too. Yes. I think the creators of that show are genius. Oh, yeah. And basically, PC principle comes in, politically correct principle, and, and Cartman has said spokesman or something like that, and PC principle just beats him. It's uh, it's actually it's actually inappropriate, but a great. And episode. then Kyle makes fun of uh, Bruce Jenner, and that's the reason yeah, he gets he, this, he gets four days' attention because he didn't say Caitlyn Jenner because saying a hero. Bruce he didn't say Caitlyn Jenner was a hero, and because he said Bruce too as well, absolutely because Bruce is. You know, homophobic, right, transphobic, right. misogynist, sexist. The Caitlyn Jenner, formerly known as Bruce. Yeah. She, he should, she should take a line from Prince and become... It is funny because they're Jenner. sitting down and they've got like the, the whole, uh, all the, the fathers in, you know, South Park. And they're sitting there like, yeah, Caitlyn Jenner is a hero. Uh, a great, uh, great Caitlyn person Jen who Caitlyn Jenner is stood a up. <laughs> Caitlyn Jenner is a hero. All right, guys, I'm doing a lot of Facebook mentions. Oh, look at that. It's Alex. He comes on in. He's doing Facebook mentions live. Hey, everybody. Hello. Did I tell you guys I was coming in here? No. No. Uh, I saw what you were covering when I was in my office because, you know, I've got a TV on doing the fourth hour, and I got mad at myself. And this is something I preach at you guys all day about. And I, but I tell you, when I preach at you, it's about me, too. I'm preaching to myself. We get this learned helplessness. We get this learned normalcy bias where we're around this news, this information so long, so intensely that we get to where huge news doesn't even affect us, like DARPA admitting this week, yeah, we put brain chips in people. Well, we've known that. You've heard the rumors. People called us kooks. Now it's confirmed. Uh, or them coming out and admitting, okay, endocrine disruptors are causing massive cancer. That was in the news today. The fact that they're saying Armageddon, Holocaust, uh, uh, what was the other word Obama Ethnic used? cleansing. What was the word Obama used in his speech? Uh, uh, Armageddon. Apocalyptic. Apocalyptic. That was an apocalyptic. And now they're saying ISIS may have nuclear weapons. Now they're saying ISIS may have dirty bombs. Our criminal hijacked government, not our general government, but the people at the top, created this group on record. We now have Ooh. the former head of defense intelligence, the general, I'm going talk, public. Talking to the mic, too. All of this is happening. Uh oh, and of course you guys are on air. I should be talking into the mic. Excuse me. <laughs> the point is, is that I'm in there watching them. And like there's Biggs and Gucciardi, because I'll let you guys pick whatever topic you want, covering what I should have been covering for three hours today. Uh, and it's the fact that American Jihad is top ISIS commander. Uh, Yazidi uh, slave. Uh, so uh, reveals that she was beaten and held captive by a U.S. citizen who directs attacks and keeps... Uh, vial of poison to kill himself if caught. But the point is, they've allowed a major infiltration. They said six months ago the immigrant wave would be about that. Here they are openly saying they're getting ready to nuke us, and I'm not even making a big deal out of this. I'm not saying nukes are coming. I'm saying the globalists are fully able to let a group do something like this or do it and blame it on them to bring in martial law and all the preparations we've seen. ISIS nuclear weapons, terrorist group plans to kill hundreds of millions in largest religious cleansing in history, says report. And what's crazy is everything ISIS keeps saying they're going to do, a hundred times bigger than Al-Qaeda, literally, they're doing. They said six months ago, we're going to invade Europe in immigrant waves. It happened. They said, we're going to attack Russia. It happened. We're going to attack France. It happened. We're going to attack America. It happened. So this isn't synthetic terror. These are real jihad groups funded and protected and nested in a nursery by the criminals that run our government. So I want to ask, what's their master plan? And, you know, Facebook mentions supposedly a deal just about your own personal life. Well, it is my personal life, damn it. I've got three children. 
I don't want them getting hit with a nuke. I'm in a major target with all these military bases. You're in a major target here in Austin. Guarantee Austin's a major target. Probably like number three or four after D.C., uh, New York, or L.A.